Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know someone who is blind? Maybe you don't know someone who is, is totally blind, blind from birth, or, or someone who has become totally blind at some point during their life. But I imagine that at least you know someone who has some significant visual impairment. We have some members of our church who have, for example, macular degeneration to the point where they are no longer able to drive, where they have great difficulty reading. They, they might be able to read with the use of a, a very a strong uh, magnifying glass. They have difficulty uh, making out all, all the details on a person's face. Those of us who have perfect vision or who with corrective lenses have at least close to perfect vision, uh, we can very easily take for granted the, the wonderful blessing of sight, vision, clear vision that we have from God. And we can find it very difficult to imagine what it must be like to be totally blind or to be severely physically and visibly impaired. To be totally blind, being cut off from every visual perception, the ability to perceive colors and patterns and, and styles and, and all kinds of images, being totally unable to perceive any kind of visual beauty. Of course, we know that those who are blind are able to compensate by making uh, more use of some of the other senses that God has blessed them with. But we who have good vision so often take for granted this wonderful gift of sight that God has given to us. Imagine now, not even just in the present day, but imagine now in the ancient world, the life of someone who was totally blind. The ancient world, without all of the, the technological advances and modern conveniences that we have, which, which for blind people today uh, make their lives uh, somewhat easier by comparison to the lives of people uh, many years ago. In, in ancient times where there was not such advanced technology, where there was not uh, such a, a, a well-developed system of social welfare which could pr help provide for the needs of, of people with that disability, as we see from the man born blind in today's gospel reading, there was only the life of a lonely beggar. However, physical blindness, blindness of, of vision of the eyes, is not the greatest problem that a person can have. There is another vision problem that is much worse, that of spiritual blindness. It's primarily that problem that Jesus the eternal Son of God came into this world to address, and that God addresses through his word, which we hear today in our worship. Jesus came as the light of the world. He came to illumine the hearts of people who walk in spiritual darkness apart from him. Because of our sinful nature, people could not see God and his love and mercy. Sin had blinded their hearts. It was that blindness above all that Jesus came to remove. Yes, Jesus did show mercy and open the eyes of those who were physically blind that, that he met during his public ministry on earth. But even more importantly, he cured the spiritual blindness that keeps sinful humanity wandering aimlessly through life without knowledge of God and trust in him. Worse even than spiritual blindness itself is Believing that being self-deceived that you are not, in fact, spiritually blind. And this happens so often in our world, so often in, in so many people's lives, when right is regarded as wrong, when evil is regarded as good, when error is regarded as truth, and, and vice versa, truth is regarded as error. Sometimes, tragically, people may even believe that they are Christians, when actually they are really far from Christ, again, being self-deceived, being deluded by the devil, being totally in the darkness of sin. Or perhaps they believe that they are serving God when they are actually serving themselves and unintentionally following the devil's will. 
Believing that you aren't blind when in fact you are is like being an addict. The worst part about alcoholism is that the alcoholic can't admit to having a problem. The worst part about being a drug addict is that the addict doesn't admit to that problem. Both the the alcoholic and the drug addict will persist in denying their affliction. And that denial is also characteristic of those who are spiritually blind. It's a devastating dilemma to be spiritually blind and not know it. It's even worse than being physically blind, because spiritual blindness leads to eternal death, eternal suffering in hell. The prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament, about 700-some years before the birth of Jesus, spoke and wrote a great deal about the servant of the Lord. And maybe you know that uh, a number of those references in Isaiah's book of prophecy to the servant of the Lord actually refer to the Savior of the world that God had promised to send, the Messiah, the Christ. But other times in Isaiah's prophecy, as in our reading today from Isaiah chapter 42, the servant is a reference to God's people, the people of Israel in the Old Testament. Isaiah knew that God's people, the the people of Israel and Judah of his time, had become blind to God and to the promises that God had made in his covenant with them. So Isaiah wanted them to be able to see God, to see their own sinfulness, and to see those covenant promises that God had made to them, so that they might truly live and see as God wanted them to. And so that's why Isaiah called out to them in verse 18 of our reading, You blind ones, watch carefully so that you can see. Tragically, sadly, Israel did not heed that call of God's prophet Isaiah. The people simply did not believe that they were blind and needed to have the gift of sight from God. The same problem of spiritual blindness and the failure to recognize the spiritual blindness still plagues people right up to the present day. The Gospel reading today from John chapter 9 attests to the spiritual blindness of, for example, the Pharisees, uh, many of whom were among the religious leaders of the Jews at Jesus' time. As Jesus says in verse 41, If you were blind, you would not hold on to sin. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. And today, we are still susceptible to that same problem. For example, the Christian who seems to know all the answers, who is always right, the church member or the church leader who is better than others in carrying out church responsibilities, are all susceptible to this problem of spiritual blindness and and not being able to recognize it. Those who claim to have all the answers, who hold positions of power and authority, or who bank on on their own righteousness, will always be in danger of falling into this temptation and sin. Pride makes a person blind to the truth and prevents them from admitting their spiritual problem. Others may not be proud, but they may live in fear that they may not measure up to the standards that others expect of them. And in their own way, they also have a problem with blindness. They're blind to the accepting, healing, and forgiving love of Jesus. Their lives are so often spent in striving to achieve, to live up to expectations that, sadly, the peace that Jesus gives passes them by. Those who teach and lead, as well as those who follow, are all susceptible to this spiritual blindness. And all who are blind need Jesus. We know that all of us are spiritually blind by nature because of the sinful nature that we have inherited. The prophet Isaiah knew what his people were like. He knew what sin is like. He knew what spiritual blindness is like. Isaiah knew that left to themselves, his people would remain in the darkness of sin and unbelief. He said in verse 20, You, Israel, see many things 
but you do not observe. Israel opens his ears, but he does not hear. Only the power of God could cure the blindness of the people of Israel. And so at the beginning of chapter 43, just a few verses after the verses of our our reading from Isaiah 42, God says through his prophet Isaiah, Do not be afraid, because I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And in Isaiah chapter 29, God says, On that day, out of gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. Yes, God was prophesying through Isaiah, promising that a true and faithful servant would come, would be the light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind. A cure for blindness. The Messiah, the Savior from sin. That is what God promised through Isaiah. Everything in life is distorted and unreal, to the spiritually blind. They must find a way to grasp reality and truth. Spiritually blind need Jesus. Without him, they can never see. Jesus gives true sight for the blind. When they see Jesus, they come face to face with perfection. And they look at themselves in the light of Jesus and begin to see themselves as they truly are true servant, who could see, did come. The promised Messiah is Jesus. In John chapter 1, Jesus is called the real light that shines on everyone. He's a burning lamp in a dark room, a bright beacon in the darkness of this sin-filled world. Jesus becomes light for those who have been walking in darkness. There is no other source of spiritual light because, as Jesus says, he is the light of the world. Through his death on the cross, Jesus brought the light of God's love to all who live in the darkness of sin. As Jesus confronted the blind with the truth, he also illuminated them with mercy. Jesus never simply revealed sin without also reaching out in mercy to the sinner. What Jesus did is beyond our ability to see by ourselves. Jesus accepted the blind in their blindness. Think about what you know from the gospel books in the Bible about the life and ministry of Jesus. Which sinner did Jesus ever turn away who came seeking to speak and interact with him? Which sinner's home did Jesus refuse to enter because they were too sinful? Which sinner's table did Jesus refuse to grace with his presence? The answer is obvious. Jesus ate and drank and socialized intentionally with sinners. This opened their eyes to see the magnitude of God's love for them. It enabled the spiritually blind to see the truth that they had not been able to see before the truth that God loves them. It's no wonder that when Jesus gave sight to the blind, the response of the blind was to praise God and to follow Jesus with devotion. They had seen the light and they followed him. The sinner who had seen the overwhelming love of Jesus through the cross of Jesus could not help but to see the new path of life that Jesus revealed by the light of his love. If you ever feel that your life doesn't make sense, if you wonder where in life you are going, if you don't know what's good or bad for you at the present time, if you feel lost, don't lose hope. Yes, you are blind, but blind people can see through Jesus. He is your way, your truth, and your life. He is your eyes. He is your light. The miracle is that in Jesus, blind people can see. We see through the eyes of Jesus. If you struggle to see your blindness because you're too used to being right 
all the time, or if you can't admit your blindness because your blind nature has deceived you, then look again to the cross of Jesus. Behold your God looking at you with the eyes of love through Jesus. You will there see your blindness and receive his sight. Perhaps your status won't permit you to be deemed blind. You're expected to know all the answers and do all the right things. Don't feel ashamed because of your blindness. Actually, only those who are blind in Jesus can truly see God, as Jesus teaches in John chapter 9. Maybe some of you are familiar with the life of John Newton, the man who wrote the hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. If you haven't seen the movie by that name, Amazing Grace, a movie that was made about 15 or so years ago, I I highly recommend that you go and watch it. John Newton had been the captain of a slave trading ship, but he later repented of his abuse and mistreatment of his fellow human beings and he became a priest in the Church of England. He recognized his spiritual blindness and God's amazing grace to him and to all wretched sinners through Jesus' death on the cross, which takes away our spiritual blindness and gives us sight to see God's love and forgiveness. And so John Newton wrote the words of that treasured hymn, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank God that through the eyes of faith in Jesus as our Savior from sin, that song is ours as well. Sing it boldly. Amen.